Ooh, I wish I had a rhyme here, but this is just the powder before the stream. Hello and welcome to the stream. That was some powder until Twitch told me I was live. Okay, yesterday we spent uh, like four hours, literally, uh, over four hours, uh, writing up the answer to the Jovian Moon question, so you would think we'd want to finish it off today. Or, if you're a regular or irregular watcher of this stream, uh, your bowel habits are not important, uh, you'll realize we probably are not going to do that. In fact, I'm sick to death of it, so we're going to at least take a break for today, maybe forever, because I don't really need to answer these questions, do I? And we're going to chase shadows, uh, very specifically, and I had discussed this earlier that we might do this. Um, we want to answer the question, how, um, how fast do shadows move? And we did have it over here somewhere. I don't know where it is anymore, of course. Um, uh, let's see if we can find it again. Um, and it's actually the question is not even that. Uh, the question is um, how, how to make the sun's shadow, you know, shadow noticeable or something. Gosh, I hope I find it. Oh, actually, it should be in here. Um, 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 okay. Actually, it should be in this file here. I th I, it better be, because otherwise I'm going to feel pretty damn stupid. There we go. So this is actually the, the actual question here. Um, we're not really interested in answering it, but it's going to serve as the basis for the answer. Um, what we're going to be doing here. Um, da 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 da. He's very boring. He does. There is an existing answer, which is our... Uh, we like that because we can F with other people. That gives us a little bit of extra incentive. I've written up a lot of this answer already, and perhaps more than once. We are going to go with that. Um, and uh, again, one of the more interesting things about this answer is the trivial answer is, is you know, e it's not easy to calculate, but it is cal calculable. But the real answer turns out to be much, much harder. And also, we can generally ignore it. Um, so now, let's see if I've done it. Oh, here we are. Um, okay. Okay, so we're going to be a little bit, we do have a GitHub backup of this. Um, now this is great where I get to quote my own self here. And here's where we get a little bit weird. Uh, because we're doing this in an astronomy um, stack exchange, we need to use tech, and it does support this version of tech, I know. Uh, but at the same time, to actually make the calculations, I used Mathematica which um, which is, for us, Wolfram Cloud. And also, I need to stop it from doing this uh, thinking I'm using Objective-C. I guess .m has a certain meaning. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is, um, is get the formulas in both tech format for the write-up and in Mathematica, meaning Wolfram Cloud format, for the actual calculations. And my convention here, which I don't think I'm using here, um, because it's actually something we could we could do um, if we wanted to. Uh, it, it, I have a shortcut that does this, but okay. And I'll just actually show you that shortcut because I think it's public. So if I want to load a Mathematica file that has formulas in it, and also has you know texted it and other crap in it, uh, I put the important formulas in a section called, you know, pseudo XML section called formulas, and then I extract that to another file called math start, and then I start Mathematica with that file. Uh, we can certainly do that here for Wolfram Alpha uh, using the WA script. Uh, we may have to at some point, we probably will have to at some point go to the website because we are looking for graphs. We might be able to get away with doing this with Mathics, although I would say the chances are very low given how bad math Mathix sucks balls. Um, and not even in a good way. I mean, you know, uh, some people are into that, actually. But, but that, and they could, that could be fun. All right, so the formulas we want here, we would be a little bit careful here. Um, oh, wow, this is a really, really old, this is a really, really old program because I'm using HA for, to mean hour angle. The hour angle is the angle between where the sun culminates, which is south, um, sorry, the, the amount of time between when the sun culminates, which is local solar noon, uh, and the sun's current position in sidereal hours, or in our case, it's actually in real hours. Um, and of course, we have to convert that to um, 
to radians for us to use it. So this says that if you know the hour angle, declination, and latitude, you can find the azimuth, and over here, you can find the elevation. Now here's where it gets interesting. Um, uh, finding the azimuth and elevation, and then we could find, then we need to look at the stick. You know, we need to look at where, um, if we have a sundial, how long is the shadow the, the sundial projects? That depends on the elevation. In fact, it's the cotangent of the elevation. So we do this, um, and then theta is the, uh, you know, the polar angle of the elevation, and that's just the opposite of uh, whatever the, uh, the azimuth is. So if the sun is shining from the south, the, uh, the shadow of the sundial will fall north. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to actually show why this formula holds, why the, uh, why the uh, radius is equal to this, and then further than that, of course, we can now convert these from polar coordinates into, uh, into Cartesian coordinates. Uh, because we are only looking at the flat ground, we do not need a z, we just need x and y. Um, from there, we can actually compute, and this will us through this slower, the change in x with respect to time, which is our angle, and then the change in y with respect to time, and then using the Pythagorean theorem, I guess th these really are pretty damn good formulas. Using the Pythagorean theorem, it is Pomodoro time, but I'm skipping it because this is the first one, but we will, I will go for two minutes and two seconds on the other ones. Um, then using the Pythagorean theorem, we uh, come up with the differential equation ds squared is just the sum of the squares of dx and dy. And finally we get ds, which is the actual movement of the uh, tip of the gnomon, the tip of the, the, you know, the sundial, um, as time moves on. So this is, um, this is what we're trying to compute, is how fast does the shadow move. So if you thought this was a really poetic stream, no. It's literally about how fast shadows move. Okay. So actually, I think, now the, the clutch for display fuckery is when I'm using real Mathematica. I don't know if, ooh, I don't know if a Wolfram uh, alpha script locally will, will run that. I don't think it will actually. Okay. So these are the formulas. And we will derive them as we go along. So let's see here. And I think I might even have a section for the answer. Yep. Um, and I think... I think we can... I want to make sure that we have the answer in sort of its own little section here. Um, okay, and the problem is I don't think we, have it, we don't say where we end the answer. Um... And I'm going to say we end the answer here. Again, these are just artificial tags to make it easier to find. I wonder if Emacs supports sections. That's an interesting question, actually. Um, and of course, actually, technically, the answer starts here as a header. Um, I know it supports bookmarks, so um, we could do bookmark set answer. Uh, and it tells us that we're stupid. And I guess we could use formulas here, but the formulas are loaded anyway, so we don't really care. Um, and let's go to the let's go to the top of the file and say work below 27 January just today. Um, in in actually my time zone and in Greenwich time zone right now. Work below 27 January 22 using uh, Wolfram. What is it actually? Is it Wolfram script? I think it is. Is it W script or WA script? Um, or is it neither? Wolfram language something? What is Warsaw? I don't want to necessarily know what that is. Is that a... Um, I'm just going to pretend... That might be a game, actually. Um, some of these are my own aliases, but okay. So now I need to remember how to run the freaking Wolfram Alpha thing. WA script, I thought it was new. Uh, WL something? Wolf something? Oh well, Wolfram script, that would be, that would be doing it. Um, let's see. And there is a way to run this that I don't remember anymore that where it does work. Um, so let's see if we can find that way in readme stream. I'm pretty sure I put it there. Or maybe I didn't. Uh, no, I did not. 
So I think it is in my git though, so let's go ahead and find it real quick. Um, crap, Wolfram script, tilde star. And I probably should have piped that to less. I could have done a minus R here to recurse the directories, but that's going to take forever. So right now I just want to find uh, if I casually happen to have it at the top level. And if I don't, I'm going to get annoyed. Actually, let me see if it's in doing. That might be the... Um, Mm-hmm. Yep. Alrighty. I know I've run this. Um, have I aliased? I don't think I have, and that would not be something I would do. Alright! All the files that are less than 1,000 bytes, fgrep minus v, Sorry, egrep minus v, anything that's an image, which I happen to have this set up as an environment variable, and I always forget what it is. So hang on. Image grep is this, image grep 2, I think, is ends in that. Yeah. So I probably don't care, but anyway. Um, and let's just make sure, I think we're going to have to do an fgrep minus v here, almost, uh, minus git here. Um, uh, let's go ahead and do an fgrep. We don't need the BEC4. Uh, these are the KMLs for the tiles for the for a climate thing that we are not looking at right now. Um, God damn it. Seriously? And then we do have to do an fgrep minus v dot git, and then I'm just going to send it. Uh, xargs. Wow. Pipe to xargs grep minus i wolfram script. This is very serious overkill here, and I do need to pipe that to less. I could have also just piped it away to a different file, and um, I could have used a really interesting uh, thing that I have called, um, Jesus Christ, called BC wait pid, where I, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, hang on, it might be on my other machine, which is bad, but at least it's tolerable. Um, I do need to make that note here, though. And I know it's we basically just need to set it up for the um, for the online version, but I don't remember how to do that. And it probably should have already been somewhere. Whoa! What the hell? Hang on, is this like notes stream or something that I did? That's interesting, but not what I'm looking for. Um. I could have sworn I had that somewhere. How to run Wolfram script. Um, it may be that it's still alive in one of these windows. In other words, okay. Um, um, oh, I think it's Wolfram script. Um, yeah, the path has to be um, Wolfram script, script cloud-based. Now, why don't I have one of those? I guess we're going to find out. Oh, I do. Um, that actually looks okay. So, I guess I just have to do... Uh, not that. Um, do I have to just, like source that? Wow. Those things are not defined. So, I'm just going to use set env here. <sighs> Brother. Um, and I'm tempted to just to add this to the uh, t-shell um, as part of the like the t-shell rec rc file. Wolfram cloud base. It might be that this only does the export in bash, which does use the equal format. We use the space format here. Um, mm, Wolfram kernel not found. I know there's a way to do... Th oh, here we are. I'm definitely going to note this down this time. Um... Here it is. Um, Wolfram minus cloud. 
And the sad thing is I actually think I have to put in the Wolfram Cloud Base, which have oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I remember running into this problem before, and I just don't remember how I fixed it, though. Um... Alright, so this is, this is, this is actually one of the more exciting things about programming. Um, we haven't actually started programming yet, we're finding problems in our environment. So, people who haven't programmed might think, oh well I know how to do it, but you're not going to get to that step necessarily. Okay. Uh, oh, I need to say minus API minus cloud, I think. Okay, no I don't. I think it's maybe Wolfram minus cloud. Um, and then I actually have to specify the Wolfram cloud uh, base. For some reason that doesn't work, but I think I can fix that. Okay, so I think for some reason if you just put in the actual URL, um, it'll probably break, but anyway. Good stuff. So we're now at the point where we're trying to start the thing that we're going to use to um, to run the uh, program. Um, and see, the problem here is I don't know if this is actually going to work. Oh, I think I know what's wrong, actually. Yeah, I think the problem is you can't go into interactive mode with Wolfram Script. So I'm going to make a note of that. Um, at some point, do I have a note? Okay, uh, port note command over to the path and doing Wolfram script minus cloud minus code works as does minus cloud minus F, but no interactive mode which I think is what we decided sucks really badly. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and try MathX, the thing that we're going to give it 20 different chances. Interesting. I sometimes run Emacs in a screen window inside of uh, inside a screen, and I'm pondering that now because I now have a nice big X term. Um, so pr previously the X term was too small, so I was worried that people wouldn't see it. Uh, now it's just like the Emacs is taking up an extra window that we don't necessarily need. I was going to say forget it, but you know what? I am that kind of guy. Um, and it's Emacs minus NW for Emacs no window. So now I can just switch between these two things and drive, the n drive you freaking nuts. But also it's easier to cut and paste. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, yes, do save that. Uh, do s no? Maybe? Hang on. I need to see what the hell is going on with my info here. This is just my info. Uh, yes. I guess. Yes. E why are... Yes. Go ahead and kill them. Okay. Solid. Maybe. Oh, fudge. It doesn't like my, um... It doesn't like my... <laughs> it doesn't like my keys. Um... Emacs D. There's a way to set it up so that it recognizes the cursor keys as being, you know, cursor keys. Um, yeah, this autom this almost instantly seems like a bad idea. Uh, let's see. Which doesn't mean I'm going to stop. It just means it seems like a bad idea. All right, let me check to see what it looks like on the other uh, machine that you cannot see and is therefore useless to you. Although this entire stream is pretty useless, so I would not be. Um. um Okay, let me, let me, this is actually kind of nice, because we only have, like, three windows instead of four. The bad thing is, of course, our Emacs session, Jesus Christ, up, down, left, right. None of those is going to work. Okay, that's fine. I know how to deal with this. Um, um, and I'm going to go ahead and put it, not here. 
Um, let's go over here. I'm going to go put it into the README stream temporarily. Um, although I guess... See, now this is where I get too clever. Um, I guess I could put it directly into the file because I happen to know, you know, this is shared. So I'm just going to create a .emacs and I'll show you what it is in just a sec. Um, so this basically allows me to use, currently it thinks these keys are, if you notice when I press the keys it does this. Uh, so we'll just eval buffer. What? Oh, your mama. Okay, hang on. Stand by. We can fix this, maybe. Um... Oh, we actually need to proceed it with this line, which we will take a look at in just a sec. <sighs> right, so this, if I yelled, if I yelled this buffer, okay, now I can use my keys, cursor keys. Uh, not that you care, but you know, again, so we're still at the point where, um, what do I want, BC, uh, BC stick rise will probably not be in here. A cool feature of Emacs is if you happen to know the exact file name that you need, you can skip over intermediary directories and do this. The uncool thing is that for some reason things .m files are objective C slash whatever the hell the L means. Um, so we put it in text mode. Okay. Um, so now, in theory, I don't think show it's going to be an issue here, but the rest of these might be. So in theory now we could feed this to, well, let's see, hang on. Math 2. No, 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 don't do that. Uh, we could do what we do in math too, which is we can get the formulas out of it. Um, oh, alias too. Okay, so sorry, like this. Um, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, which is not surprising, but. Oh, the thing that I need to put in here is, um, this. And I will probably improve this with other aliases. Okay, so that's kind of what I want to, um, feed into Mathix to begin with. Um, but I want to, in Mathix I want to continue with, with what we have here. Uh, and, uh, but except we're not going to be able to get really good plotting out of this. So, and I sort of lost why we're doing this. We're doing this because we're going to eventually answer the question, and we need these formulas. Um, but, yeah, but maybe we can get away with not doing anything with them for right now. Okay, so we have this. Okay, the other problem here is going to be this is going to be not as long, but I think I'm okay with that. Um, yes, work here using uh, something. Don't know what the hell we're going to be using. Uh, so let's, let's actually, a lot of these formulas are already written out for us. Uh, a lot of the answers written out for us. I, I mean, I wrote it, but it's, it's, it's there. Let's XRB go to the book, the answer. Mm, okay, so we're going to change this slightly. Um, this is not an answer, but maybe helpful. Okay. I will at some point want to mention my code, but not right now. Uh, I mean, this file that we're editing right now. Okay. Alrighty. Wow. Okay. XRB, going back to answer. Um, we d oh, we do need to put a summary answer somewhere, sorry. So, there's that too. Um, so let's go put that way up here. Okay. Uh, we know from the sun that uh, da, 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 da is elevation. Now, these are uh, functions that come in from here. The only problem we're going to have here is... Ooh. Um, is these formulas are in really ugly format. Um, so basically we're looking at the one for any time t. There's this. And this, uh, well, I think I actually do mention the hour angle. Ooh. Um, hang on. 
Oh my god. Um. Wow, this answer is really pretty well written already. Um. Formula. Although we can could continue working in polar coordinates, it might be easier to convert to Cartesian coordinates. Using the standard transformation formula, the x and y. Jesus Christ, have I written this answer? Of course, we're interested in the, sad, the speed of the shadow, not just the position. That's not correct. I mean, it is correct, but it's not correct. Uh, because it seems to say that we're interested in the position, um, interested in the speed of the shadow, not just the position of the shadow. We need to make it clear we're talking about the same thing. So we differentiate with respect to omega, Jesus Christ, the sun's hour angle, which we're using to measure time. Finally, the Pythagorean, using the Pythagorean, we find the total speed is... Note the unit here is meters per radian hour, with radian hour defined as above. Um, did I actually define radian hour? <laughs> Maybe I didn't. Um, I did, actually. All right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are back. And I am winded. So I'm sort of wondering... Okay, and I think I started getting into... Hmm. I'm trying to figure out why I stopped here. Okay, so it looks like I, I didn't want to give the simplistic answer, which which is incorrect, which is known to be incorrect, uh, because, as I said, it ignores um, it ignores refraction and the fact that the sun is not an infinitesimal point. Um, okay. Okay. Applies only to the center of the sun, ignores the fact the sun is a disk, and also ignores refraction. It's fine. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. So it looks like we get what we want right here, DS. Um, hmm, all right. I don't know why I keep doing that, because I keep thinking I have Emacs in a different window. Alrighty, so... Um, this is a pretty good answer, actually. I mean, if we assume the sun is a point. Uh, so what we, what are we trying to say here? We're trying to say this is the um, this is how fast it moves, and I guess we just need to plug in. S we, I guess we need to find like you know for a given day the maximum movement if we assume the hour ang if we assume the right ascension is fixed and the declination is fixed which for the sun is pretty close to true for a given day. Um, so I guess I got as far as this, and then I decided not to do any further work on DS. Um, it's a little bit weird. Okay. 
And I'm pretty sure this is not going to go the way I want because, well, partly because Mathix sucks, but also I don't think Mathix understands a full simplify. Oh, cool! It actually breaks. Um, even better than I hoped. All right, let's see if we can feed these formulas in one at a time. The conditions are just for full simplify. I do okay. There we go. It's a damn good freaking answer for something I haven't written. I haven't written up. I mean, officially. Um, okay, and here we do want to put a semicolon because we we do want these to be treated as separate statements. We don't want, I mean, especially when we're cutting and pasting, it might be confusing if we didn't do that. Um, AZ, L. So it might just have been the semicolons that threw it off. R, theta. Let me see something though, real quick. Oh. Yeah. The problem here is it's not going to accept full simplify as a, um, um, as a, as a, a function. So, we could feed the script to Wolfram Alpha, but then it would be, Wolfram script rather, but then it would be ugly because every time we went, wanted to modify it, we'd have to rerun it. Because you can't go into interactive mode in Wolfram script. Which sucks. Um, so, um, somewhere I had closed forms of these formulas. Well, probably from Mathematica. Um, so, so really, I should be storing every formula except, you know, the first simple ones after the full simplification has been done. And to do that, we need, I know, you don't want it. No one wants it. We must go there now. We must go to cloud.wolfram.com. It is free. I have no idea how to get back. I actually probably do have an idea how to get back to I don't like the fox guy, whoever this guy is. I don't like him. Um, I don't think he cares. Um, so let's go ahead and we don't need the show it module, which is only a kludge for my own Mathematica. We probably need the rest of this. Let's see if we can go hog wild and uh, just uh, escape W. Um, and just do a control V here. I don't think that's going to work. Right. Oh, well. I hit a, I did a middle mouse button emulation. Um, okay. I kind of wanted that to be all in one line, but all right. So, give me the DSHA deck latch. Tell me what it is, man. Well, that's 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 great. That that is certainly not something we could deny. Um, how about giving me the edge H A of this? All right, something's wrong. Um, my, I think these are all different cells. Is one problem, but that's not the like the main problem here. Um. I think the main problem here is, well, let's see, uh, in three, all right, well, you know, because this is Mathematica, quote-unquote Mathematica, we should be able to ask it what is R. And we want to see where this sort of, okay, what is AZ? Okay, so basically none of this got evaluated, I think, is the issue. Um... So can we combine these things? Oh, I don't know if that's going to be... Merge! Merge! I want to merge! No, no, I want to do the opposite of divide cell. Merge cell. Oh, okay, here we go. La 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 la. We are going to select you. And you. And you. I hope I'm selecting cells. You and you and you. And we're going to do... Merge! Yay. And then we'll take you, and you, and you, 
and you, and you too, little Susie Lou. Wait a minute, I lost my control clicks. Stand by. And we're going to merge you too. Nope, that's not how we do it. Hold on, little wheel thingy, the gear. All right. So now it's misbehaving now. Move it a little bit to the left here. And I'm going to move this a little bit to the left too. Alrighty. So there, 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 there. And then I should be able to do this. Merge cells. All right, we have one big happy cell family now. Um, incomplete expression, more input is, of course, because why would you even think about working? All righty. Um, so there's the first thing is we have to we have to find simpler formulas for all of this stuff. Um, the second one is actually I had to use this bloody thing because I don't want to keep creating new cells. I just want to keep changing the old cell. Maybe that's not how people do it though. Open this file on the Wolfram desktop. I bet you I don't have it though. Yep, I don't. Um, can I upload to here? I bet you I can't. Download? Can I download? Or is that only available in advance? No, it is. It's available here. Uh, there's a way to restart it, and I've done this before. Um, file, new notebook, revert to backup, delete, very close to delete is what I want. Format, no, 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 no. Evaluation, view, help, share, publish. Delete all output. Restart session. Okay. Yes, that's what I want. Alrighty. Now, for some reason, when I said restart session, it is, for some reason assumed that I meant don't restart session. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete all this crap. Let's try it again. Restart fucking session, you piece of shit. I wonder if there's a restart uh, session without showing that idiot. I guess that's a wolf because of wolf ram. I just got that. Um, but it still sucks. Okay. So for these, we actually already have raw formulas which we will need and which we will want. Come on. Okay. Good. And now we will... No, 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 no. What the hell? I swear to God, you people are fucking morons. I mean, you're brilliant, but when it comes to user design, you're fucking morons. Okay. And now I just want to tell you, me to tell you what... I want you to tell me what RHA Declat is in a form that I can use. Ugly, but I assume I did do a full simplify under the conditions. There's only three variables in there. If you can't do better than that, you can't do better than that. But now I want it in input form. So I can actually use it in... God knows where. Math Wolfram language, I guess, is what you're going to call this. Copied, and now I don't know if Yank is going to work here again. I don't think that worked. Okay, so we will just have to... Yep, this was a bad idea. Copied, now can we just paste it? No, we cannot. That is awesome. We're now working with two separate clipboards. Um, so the clipboard here is not going to be the same as the clipboard in Emacs, which is a good reason to abandon my stupid plan of, um, of putting Emacs inside a screen. We will actually use it separately now. So um, we've gone for a good, I don't know how long we've actually gone, but it's a decent chunk of time. Let me check here. Uh, for almost 40 minutes now, without actually accomplishing anything. Uh, that is not our record, of course. The record is held by Microsoft, uh, which has gone for like 30, 40 years without doing anything. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and go to vc git stack 
DC stick rise. Um, move it back into text mode. And then, doop. We can just, no, 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 no. That should be correct. Um, I guess I decided this couldn't be simplified because, I mean, we simplified. Ooh, have we? Ooh. I will go ahead and do a full simplify on this. I don't think it's going to improve any, though. I don't think it's going to get any better than this. Escape W. V. And I think if I hit... Nope, I need a semicolon there. I want a semicolon there. Let's see. And then whenever we get the raw formula, we'll just put it in here. So we're going to say theta of HA decolat. What do you think that is? It'll give us a fancy answer. That's weird. Um, <sighs> Motherfucker. Um, all right, I guess th it thinks of this as being three different cells now. Not that I wanted that, but you know, it's, you really never get what you want in life. Um, all right, and let's see what this is now. Right. Um, so if you can do this. Yay. I guess after input form, you're really supposed to put a semicolon. So that that's actually acceptable. Alrighty. Alright, so if we copy that, we can yank this back here. I as I suspect it doesn't really simplify any. Okay. Then we will get the x and y values. Um, semicolon. And then I want, well, you know what, let's just, I just get it in regular form first. And then we'll move it to input form. Because I'm sort of curious to see what this becomes. That is input form. Um, that's not what I asked for, but okay. Um, Oh, actually, that's not input form. Sorry. Input form would be a little bit uglier than that. That's the form that Mathematica understands implicitly. It is not that either, but that's because I misspelled it. It is going to be this. So we can now say x is equal to this. Oh, we're, we're actually moving somewhere with this, so believe it or not. Um... W, and we do need a semicolon here. We'll do this, and then we'll ask for Y, just in regular form, the Y coordinate. I don't know why I keep doing that. Okay, let's see. Boy, this looks really exciting. I wish I knew what it meant. Um, okay. Okay. And I think what I was going to do uh, was make a little plot of these things so we have a nice little image to show the user of how this looks. So that's, that's probably where I was going with, with some of this stuff. All right, but let's get the input form for this guy. We're not dead yet. Wishing that we were, but we're not. Okay. There's something very wrong here that I can't put my finger on. Um, so we'll continue doing this until we, I figure out what's wrong. Um, 
Yeah, no, so I think the thing I wanted to add definitely was some diagrams to this. Maybe that's why I never got around to publishing it. Okay, we'll just take U. Now we want to know the uh, change in X with respect to the outer angle. Um, hit us with some loving on that. It's very complicated, I think. Not that complicated. Alrighty. I get this weird feeling that maybe this thing is not as complicated as I think once you simplify everything. If that's true, of course, I will be vaguely annoyed because I spent a lot of time on it. Um, but that's irrelevant. Reality doesn't care how much time you spend on it. Your wife might, though. Just, just FYI. Um, reality doesn't care about um, how much time you spend on it. Women sometimes do. It's, it's, a, it's a flaw. It's a flaw in their personalities. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, now that's getting to some really nice-looking ugliness. And this is, remember, the simplified form of this. Um, it doesn't get any simpler than this. So this is a pretty beefy-looking um, change in the Y here. Um, okay. And it's going to be Pomodoro time here in a second, but let's go ahead and get rid of this first. And let's not forget our semicolons. Okay, back in two and two. And we are back. <sighs> Catching up with my breath there. All right, so we've got dy. Now we're going to compute the um, the square. This is dx squared plus dy squared, which is the the movement squared, uh, which is actually not that important because <coughs> excuse me, um, because what we want is actually the ds, but it's actually useful to compute this quantity because I think it has an easier form. It's not super easy, but it is a nice sort of form. Sometimes the squared looks better than the original. Whew. Alrighty. When I say better, I mean not better. So, Jesus Christ, we have a fourth power in there? And that's after simplification. And let me look at our conditions. Maybe our conditions are kind of stupid. Um, oh, I don't think this. Actually, I think it does work. Actually, um, yeah, I think this does work. To mean deck must be between these two numbers. I think mathematical will handle that. Um, triple, double inequality like that. That's what that means. Okay. I'm sort of tempted now because I'm just worried to just say this is less than deck. Deck is less than pi over 2. 
minus pi, you know, because it's not that hard to do to just change it to this form, which is more, um, which is, uh, you know, more obvious. So there's a chance that it's, if this changes, I'll be very annoyed. I have no idea if it changed. I think it didn't, though, actually. Simplify, yes, please. And we do want this in input form. The sad thing is that when we take the square root of this, the, I don't think the squares actually go away. Uh, you would think, because there's a lot of squares here, the square root's going to kill it off, but just the way the form that it's in, I think it's just going to be the, this the square root of this, basically. Um, uh, so it's, and that's, that's where it gets really ugly. Okay. And then finally, this is just really not going to have any effect on it. Every time I do a full simplify, I am using, okay, I am using cons, right? I'm saying full simplify, give it, yep, I am. Okay, so semicolon this. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to copy this. Hang on. Escape W. Control V. Then we just want DS of Okay, th we just want the raw format first, just so we can see what it is. W very ugly is what it is. Yeah, and that does not simplify. That is hideous. Hideous. And we're going to run into some more problems here, but that's... Um, the one problem is when the sun is very low in the sky and it's setting, the, the shadows will go to infinity, so that's when they'll be f moving the fastest, is when they go from a finite number to essentially an infinite number. But that doesn't count because it's too close to the horizon, and we really don't see shadows like that. There's all sorts of other issues going on there. Um, and so give me this in input form, yay. And I'll put it over here. That I yank. No, hang on. I needed to do this. I needed to yank first. Boy, that's not something you want to say every day. Um, all right. So this is it. This is this is how fast it's moving at a given time. Is this hideous formula, DS, uh, HA, you know, this is it. This is the formula. Um, now, one thing we can do is uh, one simplification that occurs. If we're looking directly at noon, the hour angle is zero by definition. And this reduces not really that much. I meant to put cons here. Oops. Options expected instead of... Ah! Yeah. Let's try that again. Full simplify of DS, zero, deck, lat. I realize I misspelled that. I'll get right back to it. So at noon, oh dear, this does not look good at all. Yeah, so at noon, the, um, okay, blah, 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 blah. And this is where it's actually useful to have ds squared, because it, it simplifies a little nicer, because you don't have to worry about the absolute value. Not a lot nicer, but trivially nicer. Uh, or it doesn't compile at all. That's that's the other option. Uh, actually, that's not that much better at all. Um, cosine dex squared, secant dec minus lat squared. Um, so what is that at the... Um, at, let's see, the... Um, God, I've, I've done all this before, too. Uh, and the problem is, of course, our, our measure of unit right now is radians per radian hour which is a very bizarre kind of measurement. Um, so we probably need to convert that to like degrees. Well, actually not degrees, I'm sorry. Um, meters per second, for example. And I think, I, I think I in this, I actually mention all this stuff. Familiar, you know, nope. um, hours? Okay. 
Um, Jesus fucking Christ. All right, let me see if there's an, I have any images already. I do not have any images. Um, I actually might have images that I created for this and never used. Uh, I'm, I'm working off of a, a theory here, guys. Let's just take a quick look at all the images here. This is not it. This is not it. It's interesting, though. Um, gaze upon these with wonder. They're not the answer, but they are shiny. And I don't think I have it. I do not. There's a slight, slight chance that I have it. No. Um. The only things I don't have are musicians deaths, which are not interesting. I mean, they are to musicians, presumably. All right, so we don't have an image to represent this, which bugs me because I'm sure I've created one at one point. Um, it's possible that I never got around to saving it or something, but still, not cool. All right, let me just take a quick look at what images are in here. Okay, nothing super exciting. Well, let's go ahead and put it in Dexy anyway. Um, okay, we'll just go to the next one. And, okay, so this is... Yeah, these are probably not very interesting. These are the symbols for planets. Uh, the only thing I was really looking for, which isn't going to help us here, Ellipse from center and ellipse from focus, which are not helpful. Here, diagram. I love diagrams, just like diagram. Uh, and this was a way to find the angle, given that you know some other stuff. Uh, this is the eclipse diagram that I'd hoped to use, but never got around to using. This is some output from horizons. This is the moon at the horizon. This is the moon at the zenith. Uh, diagrams, of course. All right, so... Oh, wait. This is ugly. Okay. So I guess I don't have... Okay. Um, I, I mean, I do have some formulas here to create graphics. I mean, it's like... Um, but I, I don't really remember what they do anymore. I, I mean, they, we try to convert, actually, uh, from units of, you know, um, um, our angles, which are just bizarre, into something we know better. So let's let's see where in the, in the answer we can sort of insert a a diagram and b some slightly what the hell? Here it is. And unfortunately, the Emacs bookmarks kind of they don't anchor onto anything, or they do, but they don't anchor onto anything well. Um, so this kind of weird things happen. Okay, we know from astronomy da -da -da -da, that this is this delta is. I'm going to put this into something that actually. Uh, I am going to actually cheat here. I'm not going to hit save, but um, I want to post what I have so far uh, into into uh, something that actually renders tech. Cause it's kind of hard to read this without tech being rendered. And we won't actually post this as the answer, but um, this might be helpful. Okay. Okay, so one thing I don't like about what I'm doing here is using Greek letters. It is, well, I guess I can get away with it. Now this is astronomy, maybe I shouldn't get away with it. Um, okay. Okay. And what's really bad here is these, these numbers kind of come together. Um, yeah, I, I'm really not sure I want to use Greek letters here because they just complicate things. Um, and I could certainly replace phi with p, uh, cos you know, theta with 
Is this Delta? Seriously, what the hell are you using Delta for? Except for Delta Airlines, which is wonderful. Actually, I don't know if they're wonderful or not. But I, why am I doing this? Okay, um... And so on. Okay, and so I need to say conversely. <laughs> it's really not a good place to start a sentence. Um... The value of... Okay, Omega is equal to 1. When it is... 3 hours, 49, 11 uh, minutes after noon. And this quantity is important. We'll refer to it as the radian hour. Of course, the supply is now considered a stick placed vertically into the ground with a unit of 1 meter and has an infinitesimally small opaque point at the top. Direction is, for example, if the sun is the shadow will point to north. Um, motherfucker. I was really into Greek shit then, huh? Um, <laughs> which simplifies to um, and say so I don't make it clear why I'm adding pi here. So opposite the sun's anime, a opposite um, opposite sun's anim azimuth is theta is opposite the sun's azimuth, which is simply ooh sun's azimuth. For example, but that looks like I'm pr pr proving that point. The direction is, uh, is opposite the sun's azimuth. For example, the suns just have the opposite of the azimuth angle of, it, of the azimuth angle is simply the angle plus 180 degrees or in radians oh shit do I have to actually do I do have to do this um pi and so now we have Wait, 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 why is pi not... Yeah, there it is. Okay, we're good, we're good. The length of the stick shadow is the cotangent of the sun's ele elevation, which simplifies to... I don't know why I say this part about r being... It's true, but it's not very useful. Although we could... Ooh, your mama. Okay, come on, I want to see my answer. My non-answer. Although we could continue working in polar coordinates, it might be easier to convert to... Car let's... Uh, Using the standard transformation formulas, the x and y positions of the tip of the stick's shadow, where north is positive x-axis and west is the positive y-axis. Why am I doing it that way? We would kind of want y to be the north y-axis, you know, be the positive y-axis. Um, um, this I need to stop resetting this by touching it um, which is equal to this okay so we're going way way too far here without going through any sort of um, graphics and we're using Greek letters which um, um, which I think is just a terrible idea in fact, the more I think about it, I don't even think we we're using Greek letters up here. We're not. Okay. Um, so this I put a lot of work into converting from Greek letters to English letters, uh, which I don't want to do, which is just ugly. And then we have no diagrams at all. Um, very, very nasty. Um, and right there we should stop, right there we should not do that, right there we should actually stop and put a diagram of what the sun's azimuth and, you know, look like. Um, all right. All right, so this is going to require a little bit of work, <laughs> as in a lot of work. Um, all right. All right, you're right, 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 right. Uh, it's also going to require me straining muscles. I have used... <laughs> and tiring myself out. 
muscles I haven't used in 20 years, maybe longer. Uh, that is to say, any muscles whatsoever. Alrighty, so we're going to retool this answer a little bit. Um, I think the first thing we need to do is redefine our terms here uh, because we are using, well for one thing we are using, uh, are we using both right ascension and local solar time or have I actually allowed the hour angle to be a thing? Okay, good. So this is good. Um, <laughs> and so I think we are going to convert uh, this stuff here to D, P, and omega, even though it starts with an O, it looks like a W. So we'll put it in W. Um, uh, omega is equal to plus one at center, and sun ignores the fact the sun is a disk and also ignores refraction. And right there, we should be stopping and we should be putting in. Um, we should be putting in some sort of diagram. Okay. So, and I'm also going to change the variables here. Pomodoro time back in two and two. And we are back. Okay, so this is going to be ugly. Not particularly useful. But hey, if I got to do it, you got to stick with me. Or skip ahead if you're watching the recording. Um, so we're going to change... Okay. i to be really careful how we do this. We are going to change... Okay, so I think we can make this, well, how do I do this? Note to self. So we're just, just for me, delta equals declination equals D. So we're, it's cold delta right now. We're going to change it to D, and we know that it's the declination. So we've got to start up here in our formulas where we have dec. I'm tempted to make an ant and dec joke, but I won't. Um... For those of you who don't know who Anton Deck is, just consider yourself lucky. 
All right, so we want to do this, and I'm going to go ahead and break this up into, um, you know, more than one, uh, into multiple equations, because I'm not, I'm pretty sure that one less than two less than three means one is less than two and two is less than three, but this way it's much clearer. Okay, so we're going to change deck to D, and I'm already beginning to regret not doing uh, cut and paste, so this is just now D. D. Yep, I'm going to regret this. Okay, I am going to go ahead and use cut, and I'm going to go ahead and use global. Deck, 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 deck. Deck, 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 deck. Deck, deck. Oh, there's more. Good, this is, this is not going to be painful at all. Motherfucker! Okay, and this is not part of it, so we're good. Okay. So we also need to change the deltas here, but for here they're going to be like, they're going to be very, very careful here because um, delta with a backslash is the letter delta in, in the Greek alphabet. But when you convert it to D, it just needs to be the letter D. It does not need a backslash in front of it is something I like to say. I don't know if it's actually true. I guess we're going to find out. Delta to just plain old D. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. These are formulas we might, I'm not going to use right away, but we will eventually use them, so yes, we do need to convert this. Dun, 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 dun. Motherfucker. Seriously? And this goes to just doing this whole thing over again, uh, instead of trying to change all these variables. Uh, so what you can say, you guys, up to it. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Um, I am going to rely heavily on this, you know, BC stick rise one. But I am going to start all over, and of course I could just cr create a place in this file to do it, but I'm stupid. So I'm going to actually call it BC Stick Rise, which was not a good thing to begin with, 2M. Um, over here I do need to say, see, BC Stick Rise, 2.M for latest version. Alrighty. So now, how do we get all get all of this crap in here? Uh, we do have this formula that we already have called um, in in MathLib uh, called um, bclib.m has this ra deck to uh, ha deck to yeah this suck this sucker right here, um, and this gives both azimuth and altitude, so we can just suck out what we need from it. Um, we will start out by saying, we will use the same conditions we had before, which is to say, um, and here, variable definitions, and here we will also say we want to be in text mode, not in this mode, variable definitions, and here we're going to go back here and say, um, uh, I think we can say A for azimuth, E for elevation. I know I'm going to regret. R for uh, radius of stick. We're going to end up using theta twice. I just kind of get the feeling that uh, we have... Oh. Maybe we won't. All right. T is equal to angle of stick uh, x and y okay th that that those are actually okay um, x and y coordinates of um, I guess it's stick shadow really uh, from the thingy from the the stick itself 
of stick shadow. Okay, we're okay so far. Haven't we used any variables yet? Um, dx dy equals change in x and y over time. Again, that's a very reasonable thing to have. Um, ds ds2 equals movement of shadow and movement of shadow squared. All right, so far we have not rendered any collisions. We now need to go to the uh, the formula that we have, which we can w which we can change. Um, da, 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 azimuth. Yeah, I want to use the formulas that I used in uh, you know slash twenty one. This sucker. And here, I obviously, don't want to say azimuth, but here's where we need to be careful. Here's where we need to make sure that we have the variables. D, have we already used D for something? We have not. D equals the sun's declination. P, for phi, I guess, observer's latitude. Have we used P before? Wow, we're, we're lucking out here. And W, have we used W before? We have not. Uh, P is the... Um, D is okay. Sun's hour angle. Um, I'm t I kind of am tempted to sort these just because I'm very seriously worried that I'm reusing a variable here. If I am, it's going to be really ugly. But all right, looks so, so fine so far. So for the bamboo, your mama. Uh, omega is equal to. Um, is that it? Um. Sign D, phi omega phi um, I guess it is. And alrighty, sun's declination. I am gonna go ahead and save this real quickly before I forget. In other words, I'm gonna push it to git real quickly. Okay. So alrighty. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is we are going to, um, man, I hate mathics so bad, I don't even want to use it for substitution, but I think we might be okay with that. Why do I say that? I, I, I'm just setting myself up for failure. Do I have mathics running in any of these windows? No, of course I don't, because that would be stupid. Um, God damn it, what's the command? Persist, tilt the BC get, BC, I don't think this will work actually. I think we tried it before. Hmm. So this converts HA deck in. It's actually not bad. Um, to both a a azimuth and latitude, and I'm pretty sure this is the simplest formula you can get for this. Um, I'm not even I'm not even going to try to get this to simplify that. Um, but for in our case, of course, the HA is omega, the hour angle is omega, declination is D, and the latitude is for some reason P. I guess because we decided that uh, it looked like phi, and I don't like using the letter L because it, it looks like a one. Okay. And so the azimuth. Because uh, we do kind of want these one at a time. We don't necessarily want them both at the same time. Um, so over here we can say A of WDP equals, this is not too bad actually. And I'm almost wondering if this simplifies if you pretend that this is a, uh, this is a, uh, you know, arc tan of, well actually let's just, let's just actually, um, again this is not something I should be doing, this is very very bad, whoa, oh, temp 15, 52, 1, um, See, the, the, when, when the two argument arc tan, uh, we're really looking at um, arc tan of second argument over first argument. Um, which, but however, even Mathematica doesn't like simplifying things like that. So it's basically, 
this. And the question is, does that simplify? And it might. Um, actually, does it? No, it doesn't. Actually, it doesn't simplify at all. Um, all right, good. So we will use the two argument form as we, as we should. Um, and I'm pretty sure this doesn't simplify because we, I generated this formula using Mathematica. And then we want the um, elevation, same three variables. And we can get that from here. That's just basically two. Oh, that is freaking ugly. No, I don't like you at all. Um, now, does that simplify? I mean, if it did, I presumably would have done it already, but, you know, still. So we'll call this temp. Temp 2 over temp 1. I actually don't think this will simplify either, because if it does, I'd be very surprised. It does not. So let's go ahead and do this. Eh, this is freaking ugly. I probably should have done input form, but I'm pretty sure this is the input form. Um, actually, well, every time I say that, it's like I'm going to have to be paranoid and check now. Ooh, and the first one didn't have the multiplies in it, so I don't, don't want that. I mean, it, it's implicitly multiplication anyway, because that's how uh, Mathematica treats the space. But that is not what I, I want this to be um, in input form that is for proper Mathematica input form. You do not want to be cheating and using um, printed form and hoping Mathematica will understand it. So there's that. And the, uh, this is worse. But hey, you got to do what you got to do. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I don't want to go too far before we start drawing diagrams because I think this is going to be very uh, useful. Um, or it'll be the opposite of useful. Um, so now I want to copy over from here. Um, you know from. Um, okay. Using and converting Greek letters to English for programming ease. Um, we see that the sun's azimuth and elevation at any given time is. And now here's where we want to say um, I don't keep know. I don't know why the hell I keep calling it temp, but okay. So this is this. So this is um. Uh, we want to say the azimuth is equal to that, and we want that in tech form. I, I'm just really hesitant whether that's actually tech form or not, because equal equal is definitely a mathematical sign. I wonder if we can put it in a math ML. Well, that's kind of cool. Oh, there is a math ML form. Okay. So again, we have been, we have been foiled by Okay, so we do have, um, you know, just for random variables here. 
but can it put this in math ML form? And the answer is apparently no, it cannot. We'll go ahead and use tech form, um, but I think we're not going to trust MathX. We're going to use Wolfram Cloud for this. Um, I hate this one too, though. Um, so all this goes away. Apparently, Mathematica's concept of delete everything is different from everybody else's. So delete this, delete that, and let's go ahead and even restart session. Restart session. Get rid of the little wolfman there. It was some kind of funny now that I know what he actually means. Um, and just get these two formulas going here. Okay. And I probably meant to put semicolons there. But I think it accepted it. Alrighty. Um, and I think I'm going to be special and actually use the mathematical notation that shows that these things are actually... Uh, so AWDP equals... <laughs> this, is, this is wonderful. Um, and do we have cons here? I think we do have cons here, right? We do have some cons? Oh, we don't. Okay, hang on. Um... The hour angle is greater than minus pi. The hour angle is less than pi. Is that true? Yeah, because zero is noon. And then we want before and afternoon. The declination is greater than minus pi over 2. And the declination is less than pi over 2 between negative 90 and 90. And the latitude is also greater than negative pi over 2. And less than pi over 2. It's also between negative 90 and 90. Alrighty. So this is what, what? Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are back. Man, I'm getting old. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and put the conditions in here, too. They're not really that... I doubt they help anything. Um, and I'm pretty sure this doesn't simplify any. I mean, it might, but we'd have to use, like, different simplification. We have to use something like trig simplify. Now this is not going to print out anything useful, but if we use the magical command hold form, it should print out something vaguely interesting. Yeah, that's 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 not what I wanted. Um, oh shit! Once again, 
And I'm sure I'm just not doing this right. Maybe at some point I'll take a course. Not really. Um, these need to be the same cell because uh, I don't. I want the merger. I want them. Um, I want A to be defined like this. Okay. So now this incomplete expression. Hmm? All right, let me quickly just do this to make sure that we're still not totally broken. Okay, good. Um, now it's, this will just say something is equal to itself, which is, that is true. And now I want to say whole form of this is equal to this. So this should be, that's what I'm looking for. A formula that is, um, I actually need to do a shift shift here. Now I want that in tech form. That simple? Alright. Um and I think I can get them both in at the same time. So now I'm just gonna say this. which is a little bit more complicated, but I think I can, I can accept it. Okay, now I'll be really, really, really careful here. Um, because I don't know how much tech likes being broken like this. Oh, and it's trying to justify for me as well. Beautiful. Um, uh, and can I do this with, as I probably can do this as one tech statement. Just going to be a little bit careful though. Um, This does not look like what I wanted. The hell. Hello, where's Mr. Tech? Okay, a little bit ugly. Um, is it possible that this por portion of it is not in proper tech? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So I do need to do this as two separate tech blocks. There should be a double new line character somewhere in tech, uh, but I'm not going to find it. I don't mean that I don't want to. I mean, I wouldn't find it if I tried. So we're not going to try it. All righty. Let's see if this rigmarole now does what it's supposed to do. That is closer to what I wanted just don't think we're going to get any closer. And I can put a new line, but you know, an additional break here. And I can't even do that. Can, can I put a BR there? No. Can I put a paragraph there? Double paragraph. Nope, nothing that I do is going to help. Okay. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Uh, okay. And then we need the whole where clause here. And we need to add two things. We need to add where, um, where A is the azimuth and E is the elevation. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we don't need that anymore. A is the sun's azimuth. E is the sun's uh, altitude. D is the declination. P is the observer's longitude. And then we need a whole bunch of omegas, which are all going to become uh, Ws. Okay. Here's the only 
sworn I had uh, sort of a um, a chart or something that showed what the sun's you know how the sun uh, what the sun's position was uh, for when um, it was various different times of the year like you know the uh, the solstice the uh, the other solstice the uh, the equinoxes it bugs me that I can't find that but I mean if I didn't put it into a okay hang on okay this is something I should not do I'm I'm freely admitting this I'm gonna look for all the files that match the image grep um, that match an image this isn't gonna be excessive um, So Reddit, Mathematica, Reddit, Mathematica, anything in BC Info 3 is probably not what I want. Um, Reddit, I could have sworn we looked at Mathematica already and we didn't find it. Um, all right. Oh, we looked in Astro, I think. Um, oh, actually, maybe that's where we need it. At Mathematica. I guess it's going to be Image Store. Um... Well, why don't we do this? LS Mathematica grep uh, egrep two uh, image grep two. Um, that should have worked. Oh, I think okay. Unless you alias it otherwise, I think maybe grep is not egrep. Okay, so Mathematica, Image, Star, and I'm pretty sure the other ones are unimportant to us. Okay, so this, nope, nope, nope. That was pointless. Um, Reddit, Image, Star. Cool graphs, um, but not what we need. Okay. I guess it's gonna bug me that okay, um So we did read it to Mathematica. We don't need to do images, believe it or not, because well, they're full of crap. We did I don't know why we have an XV pix, we don't really need that. I probably should get rid of it. I don't think it gets pushed to get even. Um, Q. Mm. Oh, it might be under Quora. Let me take a quick look at Quora after we do this. Okay. So with the exception of US split, these are all just image stars. Okay, not this. This is cool, but it's not what I'm looking for. Not this. Not that. Also cool. Also not what I'm looking for. Also um, shiny. I was apparently obsessed with Quora log entries. Um, you can ignore that. Oh shit, it's the last one, so it's going to stick around for a bit. Um, okay. Alright. So I guess I'm going to have to create something which I really don't want to do. Damn. No. 
not looking good. Okay, so I guess, I mean, there's probably graphics commands in BC Stick Rise 1 that I can use here, but I was kind of hoping not to. And I'll go ahead and put the work down here that's not part of the answer. Um, so graphics... Yeah, so this is we're already moving into the where the, the sundial is, not where the actual uh, not where the actual um, sun is. And the other problem there is I don't want to use an equiangular projection. I want to use a Robinson-ish projection. Um, so what the hell? Okay. Um, Okay. And I guess what we're going to say is if for the Robinson projection, if you're given an azimuth and an elevation, um, the elevation's pretty straightforward. That's just the y-axis. The azimuth is going to be uh, centered, so it, so the there's a c sort of a collapse. Um, and it looks, uh, you know, like, like, well, like the Robinson projection. Uh, do I want to do that? Do I want to use a, could use a, well, Mercator projection would be pointless. Equiangular projection would be possibly useful. Um, now, if I can do a spherical projection, because I'm looking <coughs> at the sky, I'm not sure an orthographic projection would be best. Although it is damn interesting. Um, it would be sort of hard to represent where everything was. So I guess the first thing we need to do is um, just basically try to draw something at least. Uh, I can see the graphics in my head where I had like noon, 11 a.m., 10 a.m., all this stuff. Um, <coughs> uh, am I going to let this previous setback affect me now? Yes, yes I will. Uh, right. Well, this shouldn't be too hard to recreate, though. I mean, um, oh, yes, here's what we can do. Um, plot the elevation. Okay, that's, that's actually dual. We could say what, here's what the elevation of the sun looks like, uh, over time on a given day. But, We really want to. I guess what we really want to do is parametric plot the azimuth and the elevation. So let's try that. Parametric plot. Um, we're gonna have to fix d at zero, and let's assume our our observer is at forty degrees north latitude. Um, so this, um, yeah, x will be the azimuth and y will be the elevation. That's kind of normal. And the hour angle will go from 0 to 2 times pi because we are, um, because, uh, right now we're using radian hours and that's like, this is also going to go under the, under the, um, horizon, but I'm okay with that. In fact, I think that might be actually the way to do this is is to not pretend that the sun cut off the sun when it goes below the horizon i don't think we need to do that okay mm. not exactly what i wanted um Also, interestingly, it didn't take my, um, oh, it is a parametric plot, so actually it doesn't matter. Um, okay. 
and I guess I want all right so the problem is I want the I want the noon to look like it's the higher value not the lowest value um, so when the azimuth is zero that's the North Pole so I, I guess we do this minus 40 degrees it would actually look better but I don't know if I want to give that much power to the southern hemisphere. Yep. Uh, okay. I mean, we could we can move our axes around too. We could do, you know we could change our axes origin and all that good stuff. Um, now, partly, of course, we're going to want to use uh, uh, degrees instead of radians for both axes. Um, yeah, this is this is where it gets ugly. Um, all right, Pomodoro back in tune too. Okay, and we're back. So, I'm not seeing a clear path here to, um, to getting a nice graph here. And we could plot points for where it's like 6 a.m., 7 a.m., you know, noon, one hour before noon, so on and so forth. I guess it also vaguely bugs me that this should have been a circle. Um, oh, okay, let's see. So the, no, this, hmm. <laughs> So, I guess if we chose the azimuth to be an angle instead of being uh, the x-axis, uh, and then plotted as, yeah, yeah, that might work actually. Um, so the azimuth would be, I don't know if that will work. I mean, we could do it. We could plot the azimuth, you know, the azimuth as, um, the uh, so that north is up, south is down, east is to the 90 degrees. Then how would we plot um, elevation? We could do it as distance, of course. Um, that doesn't seem right, though. Um, unfortunately, I think this might be this might be actually accurate. Is the problem? Um, I'm, I, I think the sun's going to go in a circle, I mean, it should go in a circle, everything else does, uh, but how do we represent that? How do we represent that it's going in a circle? And I think Stellarium might be able to help us, whatever projection it uses. Um, I think we'll have the sun going in a circle, but, 
but I'm trying to see how this is going to uh, to play out here. Um, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the sun doesn't go in a circle. Um, let's find out. I'm stumped, so I'm just going. I'm just hacking at straws here. Let's see if this is the one where it runs or where it doesn't run. Da, 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 it does. Okay. Okay. Let's find the sun. I mean, this would be true of like pretty much anything, but big shiny ball in the sky. Alrighty, and we are g okay. We're g ooh, we're going to really, really crank it out here. Um, observer point of view, and yeah, maybe that was not the best. Because now we have we fixed on the sun, so let's go ahead and create a um, azimuth grid. Get rid of the constellation boundaries, and not focus on the sun. Let's see what happens now. It's kind of weird because it looks like the grid itself is moving, but it's not. Um, so the sun. I'll move it a little bit faster here. Okay. Yep, the sun is moving in a circle, and the circle happens to be centered over here, so let's maybe help it out a little bit. Okay. The sun. Going over there, coming back over here. Coming back over, I guess we'll make this circle a little bit lower because we're in winter. Okay, so whatever the hell projection they're using, I want. Um. Faster, Mr. Sun. Okay, now it's just going to spin around and round. Round and round. Okay. So this is a projection I want because it is the one that shows the sun um, as a circle. And I guess I want to center it here-ish. Because uh, that sort of makes the most sense. I probably don't need to zoom it out this much because um, the sun never touches the nadir or the um, the zenith at, at this latter at Albuquerque this latitude okay so above okay the that's a slight problem there that it's going off the edge of the screen but I think I'm okay with that um, actually I'm not okay with that that shouldn't happen I mean I guess it's because of the way I have slurry oriented right now yeah, there we go. Okay, goes a little bit below, comes a little bit uh, frustration. Um, okay, let's figure out what this what this um, stop time first. Let's figure out what this projection is. I think it is the stereographic. I didn't. I actually had no idea until I said it. Until I looked. Vertical viewport offset. What does that do? Oh. Does this let us bring in like bigger? Does this let us bring in like bigger? I mean, I think I just changed it back to what it was. Apparently, this has a meaning. Um, I guess that somehow this has a. Uh, no, no, no! What the hell? Vertical viewport offset. Yeah, baby. No idea what this means. Um, I guess it's how close you are to the damn thing. Because that there is not the horizon. Because I have the horizon turned off. That there is actually something. What the hell is that? That's the curve of the Earth or something? Anyway, maybe I'd better not mess with that. Um, perspective? No, stereographic. Alright, so we need to learn about the stereographic projection a little bit. Um, we almost... Hello, hello, hello! Now we're really in space, yes. Yes, we are. Hello, Joffrey. Joffrey the Giant, as you can see here. 
wonderful local streamer. By local, I mean Albuquerque, but if you want, you can pretend that he's in your own neighborhood. He's that friendly and nice. Um, yes, we do all really in space. We're using Stellarium, and I'm okay. Now it's real. Yeah, this is, I'm actually in space now, which is amazing. Um, which is difficult because I don't have any special equipment, so I've got like five, ten minutes before I freeze to death. Don't know how the hell I'm talking because space is a vacuum. Uh, but, but cool. Um, I want to still figure out what the hell the vertical viewport is, even though it, it really has nothing to do with this. Okay, so if I do plus 50%. Oh. Okay. So it's basically how much... How much the c comparison of azimuth to altitude, I think. I think, I think, I think. But let's try minus 50 and see what happens. So this actually might be what I want, is something closer to minus 50, because I can now... D oh, no. Yeah, the sun's out of control. Okay, screw that. Let's just go ahead and set it back to zero where it belongs. I choose category star. <laughs> uh, star there isn't really... It actually just uh, lets you draw constellations differently. Uh, I'm using the standard Western, you know, American, uh, bourgeoisie... Uh, thing the, the that culture. Okay, so what we're trying to do here, and talking to the stream was supposed to help me, but it hasn't that much. I want to uh, I want to show the sun's path over a day, uh, not using Stellarium, even though that's nice, um, but using like a, you know using a graphing program. Tupi Guarani, what? Oh yeah yeah yeah. That's what the hell you know? I, I'm I'm bored. Let's go ahead and look at the Tupi Guarani. Um, Um, show labels, show constellation lines, and use native names for the planets. What the hell? Yeah. So, let me see. I'll get rid of the equatorial grid because it's kind of interfering with what we're doing. Um, and we will have to zoom in a little bit. And why are these li lines so faint? Hang on. Can I do this? I can do this. Constellation labels, constellation lines. Fucking get rid of the stars. Anyway, this is um Wow. Hang on, let me go back to this. Alright. So here is like Viado, I don't know what that actually is, but um Oh my god. You actually know what these words mean. Okay. All right. I think if you're going to actually do this, I'm actually going to go get serious about this. Um, I am going to... Let me get rid of some of the stars here. Oh! Okay. Are the tupi Guarani culture related to the Portuguese in some way? Um, okay, so now we can get rid of the freaking... Ah, we can see the constellations a little bit better, maybe? Does this look like a viado to you? Oh my god, it sort of does. I don't know what a viado is, but does this look sort of like it? Okay. So this, this has some viado-like features, I guess. Um, does that look like a viado, sir? Have you seen this viado before? That's a male deer. Okay, awesome. We're learning some culture here. I kind of wish I had a way of... Uh, there should be like a chart mode where I should be able to rotate any way I want. Um, let's see. But anyway, does this look like a white ostrich to you? Does that have some significance to the 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 uh, Tupi Guarani people?
I mean, I guess the uh, it's interesting though. It actually kind of we're not looking seeing the stars here, but if you know, um, it does sort of look like the white ostrich is doing nasty stuff to the male deer. Uh, it's like an ostrich in their side. Okay, cool. Let's look at some others. We can certainly um, we can certainly look at these. I know what old man means, obviously, it's English, a viejo. Um, one second, sorry, I'm going to get rid of the planet. I'm going to get rid of the frickin' asteroids, they're beginning to bug me. Um, oh, come on, seriously? Solar system objects. Um, no, don't show those. Okay, so what do you think? What do these words, some of these words mean? Um, what is Joy Kexo? Quixada de Antana. I should know some of these. I do speak a little Spanish. Vespiero or Aexu. Evening Star, Ant Eater's Jaw. Huh. Obviously, this is evening. Evening Star, Ant Eater's Jaw. So, this does not really kind of go with the old man. Huh. Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's get to find some. Now, can I assume this Anto the Norte is North Star over here? Vespiero is Evening Star. Oh, what is Anta de... An I thought Anta... Quexita de Anta. Northern Anteater. Interesting. So what does de Anta mean? I mean of something. So this is the northern star. Uh, let me bring up a really quick. Um, I want to see if that is that's nowhere near the where the northern star is for us. But anyway, jaw of the oh anta of the anteater, jaw of the anteater. So the old man. This has nothing to do with uh, the old man and the anteater. Apparently, like, like whatever. Homosexually linked. Okay, we already did the white ostrich. Is that it? These people don't have much of a culture. <laughs> that, that's probably really, really rude. Uh, I guess that's it for these are the constellations they had in, in, in this culture. That's not very exciting. A tap, which is a kind of a uh, well, we could show a picture of a tap here. It's one of those weird looking mammals that has like this funky, uh, has this funky looking, um, well, we'll just look at it right now. Has a funky looking nose. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're ugly, ugly animals. Um, well, I don't, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm at a really high uh, viewpoint, so I think this is all there is for this culture. Um, kind of a sad old culture that only had four or five constellations. In the southern regions, they developed towns and agricultures. In the Amazon, not as much. Okay. Now I'm. I have. Tr I have. Um. They probably didn't have boundaries. Oh, can we do constellation art? I don't think they had any of that either. Let's well, like, Okay, so we have like. Oh, Tapir. No, that's Anteater of the North, uh, or something. Well, I'm guessing they had more constellations than this. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, hang on. Hang on. If we're going to be like this, we might as well. Um, the indigenous people of Brazil and other South American countries, uh, constellations were used to keep track of the seasons. Um, only detail seven. Oh my god. Homem Vero, the old man. Wow. Okay. 
Okay. So so we have these um Ah. Okay. <laughs> Any of these other ones look interesting to you? I mean, I'm I'm happy to <coughs> I'm happy to go with them, and obviously they have some help here. Uh, but um, yeah, apparently we had 30 of them, but we don't we can't find most of them anymore. I mean, you know, any of these other looking? Okay, let's see. Tucano is also Brazilian. Let's take a look at Tucano. Oh my God, they had a wheel. Well, let's see if we can if we can run. Uh, let's see if we can actually uh, understand them before we look at the uh, we cheat. This probably doesn't mean what we think it means. F okay, Ferdinand's is a snake, a tortoise. Um, I'm going to skip Pomodoro this time since we have a visitor. Now let's take a look at the tortoise here. So basically four stars make up a tortoise. The snake... <laughs> a kind of grill to cook fish. And I'm going to go ahead and ignore my nightbot for this one. Um, you know what, let me, let me actually bring in some of the stars here. I'll, uh, I won't bring them all in because it gets too, um, too bright, but let's see. Um, have I brought in too many now? And another thing I can do, and again, I'm, I'm really new to this, so um, let me change the constellation lines, which are not listed here. Piece of crap. I thought I could change their color to be more, um, to be more, to be more brighter. Um, yeah. Apparently, I cannot do that. So, sky. I can, however, limit the number of stars to just the bright stars. Okay. So, is the tortoise the Southern Cross? That's a good question. And we can actually... Let's... Oh! You're right! That's Alpha Crucis, the crux. Uh, gamma. Yep, this is it. This is the Southern Cross. Nice. That is... You know a lot of this shit. Now the snake... Is that the scorpion? I think that's Scorpius. The scorpion. Uh, Alpha Scorpio, which is Antares, although they don't give it that name. Yep, this is the scorpion right here. And then they sort of conclude to have it continue to go down um, into what we call Sagittarius. Nice. All right, let's find us some more. Okay. See, group of stars just sounds kind of stupid. Now, please tell me... This is the Big Dipper, obviously. Um, please tell me this, this word is in, like... Does this mean like the year or something, or is it really saying what I think it's saying? This is the Big Dipper. I mean, this is obviously the Big Dipper. Uh, is this saying like Snake Large Anus, or is it really what I think it is? Big Snake Butthole. The Egret, interestingly, the Egret has no really bright stars in it. So that's uh, kind of interesting there. Um, but, so, so it looks like the constant. See, I don't see why a group of stars would make any sense. Oh, the Adza handle is Orion, essentially. Part of Orion. It, it is the snake. The Big Dipper is a snake, is an anus of the snake. Um, oh! Okay, so this could just mean the butt of the snake. I don't see it. Um, well, okay, actually I do. This could be your snake. Um, but the problem is, like, I hate when people say, like, snake or triangle or rectangle, because really everything could be a snake. This could just be, like, a big windy snake here that goes through the whole freaking sky. 
big butt snake. So would this be the... I, why? Uh, yeah, because anything, anything could be a triangle. Uh, triangle! Uh, other triangle! Uh, other triangle! Oh, look! This triangle and this triangle could... Rectangle! Okay. You need dragons. In, well, we do have a dragon in the sky. Draco the dragon, of course, but that's in our culture. In this culture, they do not apparently have that. But this is cool. The egret, I'm kind of wondering what the, what the hell... Um, so this is Leo, this is Virgo, I'm guessing. No, booties. So I don't know how they got a constellation here where there's very few, there's no bright stars, actually. Um. Oh. So this is their dragon, big butt dragon. Pumar, oh, that looks really good. The Pumar Jaguar looks really good. And what is it for, oh, this is what we call Perseus and Cassiopeia. So the W of Cassiopeia is part of the, this is a good looking puma. I really wish I knew how to, like, um, one problem is we're looking at this from the northern hemisphere. Let me change our location really quickly to somewhere in Brazil. Uh, this day. Okay. So now, that didn't help at all. Oh, it did, did actually. So now we can see the puma or jaguar sort of more the way they would have seen it. Sorry, let me go the other way with this. Um, okay, I'm not exactly sure what the hell I'm doing. Serpent of old. And the big butted, the big butted snake. Another snake, Armandillo. Now, is the armadillo something we know about? See, again, this looks like the very faint... Um, so this is what we call the eagle. And this is what we call the little arrow. See, again, see, this is, like, weird. Why would you declare a constellation in the middle of nowhere? Kind of fish and a Caribbean shrimp. Again, these are... I mean... All right, let me let me do one thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna bump the magnitude a little bit here, just to see if we can get it to 5.5 or something. Maybe. I mean, there are obviously some stars there. Otherwise, they're not gonna make symbols in the middle of nothing. So, but see, this is a very these are very faint stars to be making constellations out of. This is pretty much what we call Aquarius. Uh, a fish grill, funny every time. Is I mean, do they have? Fi I mean, they must have had fish grills. A, a kind of fish. They're just, they're not just trying that hard. I mean, I think the people who translated aren't trying that hard. Um, oh, the armadillo. This is, okay, actually, this is what we call the dolphin. Delphinus the dolphin. Although not right here. Yeah, there it is. This is the Delphinus the dolphin here. So th this, c this is actually, even though they're very faint, they're very close together and they look kind of cute. Um... Now, who the hell calls it a group of stars? I mean, that just kind of bothers me. Look, a group of stars. Oh, 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 these are the Pleiades. These are the seven sisters, the Pleiades. That actually kind of makes sense. Um, so this, that's what we, we would call it a cluster. Uh, Adze Handel is part of Orion. Ferdinand's. Okay. Let me see what this kind of grill to cook fish is. I, I'm suspicious now. Um, is that is that what we call the bull? This is uh, this is Taurus's head. Yeah, this is what we call the bull. Um. <laughs> All righty. Let's. Any of these, uh, any others of these fancy, you would do any of these others, just pretend I said words. Northern Andes, would that be uh, something that you want to look at?
Uh, yeah, you bet. I'll put Takana right at the bottom now. So this is, if you want me to scroll further, let me know. But if any of these look interesting, some of these look interesting to me. Maori would be kick-ass. Let's take a look at the Maori sky. We will not look at the, oh, New Zealand. Shit. Oh, and I have art turned on, too. So um, let's go ahead and get ourselves to Christchurch. Not to pray, but to get, because we want to get to New Zealand, where these would be the... So, let me turn off the art real quick, because I don't think it's helping us any. Um, the sale of Tanuni. Tamuka Yomama-san. Okay, and this is, what we, I think this is Orion, right? Yeah, this is the belt of Orion here. And these are the Pleiades. And this is probably El Debron right here. Oh, yeah. What does tamatu kuku mean? Sounds kuku to me. Or puwanga. And these are all good bright stars to navigate by. Oh wow, they have another puwanga, puwanga hori. So that's like the, the slutty sister of puwanga. Ah, uh, okay. So let's quickly look to see what they have here. The Great Boat. Wow. They have some cool shit. Wahuni. Wanuni. It's a kind of fish, I think. Is that Wahuni? Uh, yes. You have owed at me. Don't know what the hell that is. Um, I mean we can obviously go to the help here and, and look if we wanted to. Um, similar to the Polynesian, um, wow, so they also used Heliacal Rising. Um, damn good question. To be perfectly honest, I've never used this feature before.